Hello, everybody. It's Hall of Famer Tim Brown, and you're watching the Sagu Sports Network. Good evening and welcome tonight to the Schaefer Center here in Waxahachie, Texas, on the campus of Southwestern Assemblies of God University. You have tuned in to the Sagu Sports Network feature presentation of tonight's doubleheader matchup, starting off with women's basketball. The Your Lady Lions are hosting OPSU, that's Oklahoma Panhandle State, all the way in from the Panhandle of Oklahoma in Goodwell. Tonight, my broadcasting partner, Kerry Woodson, will be sitting in for uh, an ailing Hank Moore, and we want to say, Hank, we hope you're getting better. Can't wait to see you back here on campus. But, Kerry, how do you feel tonight? How, what, what do you think? Hey, I'm excited about being here tonight. It's a great night for basketball, especially this late in the season when both teams have something really to play for. They really, really do. And then on the court, courtside, matter of fact, we're going to go down right now to our very own Kristen Urban, who's with head coach Tiffany Phillips. Thanks, Sean. Coach Phillips, you have two big games leading into the conference tournament this week. How did you prepare your girls? Uh, truthfully, we talked a lot about just making sure that we enjoy the journey this week. Um, sometimes we get so focused on the destination, which may be the conference tournament, a national tournament, whatever it may be, that we don't stop and enjoy the journey. And so we, we really focused on doing that this week, look back at what got us here and um, and went from there. I, so, I mean, obviously we practiced. Um, and, and we, we focused on OPSU, but we just want to make sure we're having fun and enjoying the moment. OPSU is fighting for a spot in the conference tournament tonight. What's it going to take to defeat them? We have to make sure defensively that we play really well. I thought over there uh, we didn't play as well as we should have defensively, probably offensively too. Uh, a, lot of fact, a lot of factors go into that, obviously. Um, the bottom line is they, they scored more points than we did over there. We have to do a better job defending tonight, make them speed up a little bit and not let them run their offense so much. Thanks, Coach Phillips, and good luck tonight. Back to you, John. Thanks, Kristen and Coach Phillips. Gary, it's so good to see Coach Phillips with a big smile on her face. They're in a yeah. good place, but talking about enjoying the journey. Now, I hear a lot of coaches, they say, hey, go out there and just make sure you're having fun. But I, I like the way she stated it, and, and she is about enjoying the journey, and that's very important for these young ladies to be in the moment and really get what's going on. Yeah, they're, they're, it's important to be able to enjoy what you're doing. Yep. You know, sometimes we talk about getting your game face on and, yep. and you get so serious about it that then you forget about what you're really doing and why you're doing it. And so it's nice to have that fun while you're out there too. And there you see the women's basketball standings for the Sooner Athletic Conference. And what uh, Carrie was talking about a little earlier, there is something to play for for these Lady Lions. They are tied for fourth place. And that fourth place is very, very critical to the moment at the end of the conference season. That is the fact that if you're in the top four spots, you get to host the first round of the playoffs. And having a, a, a home field advantage, per se, uh, gives you an, an edge to make it to the final four, which will be hosted in Oklahoma City. And uh, that's real important to get to that next semifinal round having most of the time we we did some uh, stat analysis on that and it shows that the home teams win about 90 percent of the time in in that and mac you and sagu are going at it right now because they are tied and as you see it uh time has passed really fast in our pregame setup so we're going to take you down courtside right now for the pregame festivities the opening prayer the national anthem and the starting lineups Watch over all the players and officials, protect them from all injury and all harm, Lord. We love you, we thank you for everything that you do in our lives. It's in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleam? Who's much and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watch were so mad. 
And now the starting lineups for the visiting Agnes. And on the seat number two, Tango Acosta. At guard senior number 12, Monty Regier. At guard junior number 21, Addison Munch. At forward junior number 23, Tanya Hayes. At coaches Victor Esparza. And there you had it, the starting lineups for tonight's matchup. Your Sagu Lady Lions hosting the Oklahoma Penn Handle State University. Gary, give us a couple keys to watch for for the Lady Lions. What do they have to do to really get this win tonight? I think it's going to be important for them to have a balanced approach and get some scoring from from others than just Lexi. Uh, I think as uh, you know, Jenna and others that you know, will pick up that slack and you know, as Coach Phillips said, play defense, make sure they don't co score more points than we do. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and there's the tip. OPSU wins the possession. Munch. Probably the X factor for this OPSU team. It's a good drive. A little bit uh -huh. off. That's Acosta. There goes Sydney missing that three. If she can knock those down, that'll that'll make a big difference. Good dish inside. Great pass by Metter to Dottie Diggles, and Diggles just missed the bunny. OPSU, very disciplined team. They will play mostly in a half-court set. You will not see them running or gunning too much tonight. Lexi Rich performing her opening Harlem Globetrotters bit. Mm. Misses the 16 footer. Entry pass down low. I think that's going to be a key matchup down there with Jenna, you know, playing defense down low and how well can she control the paint in those defensive boards, especially. And that was Hannah Fox with that shot. Uh, well defended by Jenna Price. And anyone that is going to have to offensively face Price is going to be in the lurch. Tough entry pass. Lurch gets it. I mean, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Um, Fox gets it. <laughs> Lexi Ridge gets it started, and Kiara Glenn brings the ball up. Lexi coming off of that screen and now put that up right there or she'll drive and dish over here to the corner. Matter loses it. 
And OPSU grabs it to tie it up. The jump ball will go to Sagu. Possession arrow changes over to OPSU now. Glenn to Price. Price to Rich. Rich down to Diggles. Diggles looking. Hits Price up at the top of the key. Price drives. She hits the shot clock and it's out of bounds. A little frustrated. OPSU walks the ball up. Play is called. Offensive set has begun. Fox. Oh, good, good defensive help there by Jenna. Takes the shot, bounces twice, and is off. Rebound, Sydney Metter. And that's going to be a two-shot foul. Price will go to the line. And it looks like they put that on Hannah Fox. Been seeing Jenna drive to the basket a lot more than what you normally think of her playing down low, but she's been taking the ball out high and driving down there. Coach Phillips is definitely taking advantage of her uh, ball handling skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jenna, although she plays the, the inside role, the center, she has a lot of skill set all the way around the board and can do a lot of things. Now that's Munch. She is their leading scorer. Yeah, and she, she showed in, why. Yeah, averaging about 16 points a game coming in. Linda Rich. Rich wards off the double team. Price to the basket wow, with the right drive. hand. It's and it, easy to see what they're wanting to do right now, game plan wise. They're they're putting it to Jenna out the top of the key and letting her go. And she can do that on either side, Carrie. She's lefty and a righty. And what a big time shot by Taylor Acosta from about 22 feet. Kara Glenn, quick shot. And it's good. That's a good 16 yeah. and a half foot jumper. And that's what happens when the defense is having to be so concerned inside. They start dropping off, and then that leaves those outside shots open. You can see that's a good game plan that Coach Phillips has designed, especially for this OPSU team. OPSU in their patience. That's a little bit short for Acosta. Dish down to Price. Price to Metter. Metter taking it left-handed. Makes it look easy over Munch. Now you're seeing a 1-2-2 press. OPSU breaks that easily. And good layup. That's Nadia Hayes for two. Glenn, starting the offense. And that's going to be a travel. Good defense all the way down. We'll see if they spring this press on them again. They showed that they could handle it that first time. A bit of a surprise. Costa, long shot by Rieger. There goes another three. And that is special when you get your point guard to start going hot from the outside like that. Kira Glenn delivers a very long three-point shot. Nadia Hayes doing mad work down low on the block. No foul. 
Yeah, they did a good they did a good job. With, Dottie had to go out to cover defense on the perimeter and left a bit of a mismatch down there. That bounces off the shot clock. Lexi Rich still searching for it. Now this could be an important substitution here as, as McKenzie comes in. If she can spot up and hit some of those threes, that will really set up the inside game even more. Absolutely. McKenzie Martin, by statistical percentage, the best three-point shooter on the team. That was a good shot, just a little bit short for Naomi Rodriguez. They have the smaller Rodriguez on Kenzie Martin. Martin doing the high post duties right now. That was in and out for Kiera Glenn. Very close. Munch just going all the way. Got a smooth touch around the basket, converts, and she's going to get another one from the free throw line. Now that's just going to be a tough matchup for anyone that's on her. You can tell she can, she can go from outside to inside and drive there and really have a difficult time anybody matching up with her. And that's Addison Munch. Getting her fifth point of the night. It's a one-point ball game. Lady Lions in the lead. Lexi Rich with a floater. Bounces off the front of the rim. Gets tapped up. OPSU with the rebound. Oh. I'd like to see that in replay. I don't believe that was an actual travel. That was a good head fake. Yeah, it was close. Yeah, it was an was awkward. Jumping out, or yep. jumping out at her. And here comes the right foot's the pivot foot. She still placed it. It's on the ground. Her yeah, foot's on the ground. Back call, ref. I think we might have gotten a break there. Outlet pass to Sydney Metter for a three. Price may should have taken that. Munch gets body by Price, no call, but converts the two. Carrie, that that's why she's the top scorer for her team. She just knows how to score. She does. Price. Almost air mailed it. It's going to be off Sydney Matter. OPSU gets the possession there. Much wide open. Man, she's a shooter. She's got nine already in the first quarter. A minute 30 left. DeRoe gets tripped up. It's going to be a foul on the ground. I believe that's going to go to, no, not to Acosta, but that is going to go to Morgan, Kaylee Morgan. And that's the pressure that DeRoe puts on the defense is with her quickness. You know, it's hard to stay in front of her. It really is. I, I, I think she's got the fastest 40 on campus. I wouldn't doubt it. Now, there's the shot by McKenzie. And that's going to that's gonna be what really changes things uh, for OPSU defensively. They're going to have to be faced with, do they guard the three, or are they going to open it up for the big player uh, down low, like Price? And Diggles. Big point there by Munch. She has 11. Atunawa. Matter. Driving. In and out for Sydney, uh, for 
Kenzie Martin. Nice little underhand layup by Kaylee Morgan. DeRoe to Atunawa. Atunawa going to take it down. She does that very well, Carrie. And she's going to go to got the line. Foul, going to yep. go to the line. She's a hard fighter. Love to see a Tunawa play basketball. One of my favorite players on the team. Just gritty. The first one's good. One more coming. And that foul was assessed to Nadia Hayes for OPSU. The Tunawa hits both. Very crucial to shoot good free throws. Half court shot. No good. And that's the end of the first quarter. Talk about some of the good things that you saw these teams do, Kerry. Well, it really started out as a defensive battle at first. It's like both uh, several possessions up and down the court. It's like nobody could score. Yeah. And then Munch really started taking over down on their offensive end, and you started getting some some drives on there, uh, some outside shots. You know, McKenzie came yeah. in and hit a shot, opened things up, and so I think it's just. Um, it's going to be a really good game. I don't see any te either yep. team really blowing the other one out. No, I think it's going to be tight uh, to the end. And uh, there you see on your screen some other Sooner Athletic Conference ladies' action tonight. That's uh, Bacone and Central Christian in the top left. Langston traveling to Arkansas tonight to play John Brown University. And as we had mentioned earlier, Sagu not only having something to fight for, but maybe in a more perilous situation, Oklahoma Panhandle State sits there at number eight. They cannot afford to drop any games. They are just one and a half games back uh, from Southwestern Christian. So if they drop a game tonight, they have a couple more that they have to play, um, and Southwestern Christian wins out, that could flip-flop, and if you're number nine, you do not go to the postseason tournament at all. Yeah, you know they're feeling the pressure. Yeah, got to win. Good, good pass. Good help defense, and then good pass and dish down low. That was a great offensive set there. Yeah, that was a tunawa to Sydney Metter. Metter converts. She has four points. Mm. Tried to lead the pass. That was Naomi Rodriguez missing Shambri Kelso. DeRoe. Rich trying to make something happen. Goes in. Looked like Kelso had it tied up. May have could have been a jump ball, but it's yeah. out on OPSU. Yeah, she was able to get it away from her just in time and get the shot up and off of OPSU. Rich with the easy side, no good. And that's going to be, should have been, yep, it is. Lions basketball. That's going to go to OPSU. I got busy uh, watching. Yeah, I, 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 with some I was watching handling. her, yeah, with uh, ball handling. I think she might have stepped on the line going down there. Yeah, that, that was a quick call because I thought it could have been bounced off of OPSU, but it was off of Lexi. Oh. 
That was a short yes. alley oop. I don't know if she <laughs> meant to do that or if she just got lucky. But it worked yeah, out. Right. Nadia Hayes for two. Darrow on the right side. Down to Atunawa. Atunawa just trying to make things work. Good footwork. Good footwork. And her strength just powered her over the defender. Got it to roll in. Shooter's touch. Off shot by Kayla Morgan. Kenzie Martin wide open. You can't do that. Got a little lucky there. Yeah, she's going to knock those down more often than not when you leave her that wide open and let her set for that long. Munch. That's going to be a jump ball. And it looks like it should go to OPSU. And it does. Munch. Looks like that's going to be a control, player control foul on Naomi Rodriguez, I believe. Yeah, I think Price drew that foul. Yep. So if you were watching the, where the ball was, you missed underneath. And Price, it's not officially a charge, but it's a player control foul on OPSU. Tuna were forcing it up off the side of the backboard. I don't think she could make up her mind what she wanted to do. Yeah. Right Off shot. By Rieger. That's a nice look at jumper by Lexi Rich. I think that's her first basket of the night. It is. To Rich doesn't usually wait that long to get on the scoreboard. I think that's off OPSU. It is. Wait a minute. Nope. They say a Sagu player touched it. Let's look at it in yeah. replay here. Yeah, Looks I think like Eva tipped it away. I Ooh. Believe. Ooh. Close call. Close Very call. Close. Two are playing lockdown defense. Get it out to the side. And Taylor Acosta just buries long range three. Oh, Sydney Meadow with a wraparound pass. The tuner keeps it alive. Rich down to Price. Price takes it in. No good. Price what makes up for that Way to bad go. shot and comes up with a steal. Jump that pass and anticipated it greatly. She wants another try at it. Left now, hand, left hand. And that's good what job. she, that's her strong hand and that's what she does best. Price again fighting for it. And wins the jump ball battle. It's going to be Lady Lions ball. The really great thing the, the Lady Lions have going on for them right now is you look at the balance scoring that we talked about at the beginning. They can't key on any one person right now and just trying to shut that one down. Yep. Looks like the pep talk Coach Phillips had at the end of the first quarter has worked. Lady Lions much more responsive in this quarter. Rich. Out top, gets it down, good entry pass. Dottie Diggles 
with the delicate drop off the glass. Beautifully executed. And she gets the foul. She's going to shoot an extra. You can really tell the Lady Lions have some great post coaching going on. But you just look at their footwork when they get down there. They can, they can use that and get the shot up. Yeah, whether they're falling back or leaning in, mm -hmm. they got a couple options. And uh, Coach Phillips has acquired a couple assistant coaches. Uh, Emmanuel Adoy working mm -hmm. with the big men down there. And he has just done a fabulous job this year. That looked like it could have been touched in a block. Great rebound instinctively knowing Grabbing the short shot, Sagu gets a fast break out, and Sydney Metter gets fouled. The foul is going to be on Monte Rieger. Good offensive rebound by Jenna Price. Going down in two, and it gets blocked. And that one, she probably should have gone ahead and shot that outside shot, because she has that shot. A little bit of sloppy play there by OPSU, but they get to keep the ball out on Kier Glenn right there. Costa gets trapped down. She loses her dribble. Gets it to Hannah Fox. Good put up there. Got her own miss, her own rebound. But that's Hannah Bennett doing good work down in the paint for OPSU. Kiara Glenn running the angles really well. And that's going to be a foul on Jenna Price. She was, she was trying to get that loose ball. But she really was. Going after it. Going after that rebound. She doesn't lead the team in rebounding for no reason. And that's that, right. That kind of hustle. Well, she's number two in the nation in defensive rebounding. And one of probably the only few averaging the double-double are right there with the double point scoring and rebounding. Oh, big time shot by Addison Munch. Munch with 14. Bad pass, good steal. Hits Munch out on the side. She's long with it, goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Lions. Ooh, don't know about that. <laughs> oh, good feed pass. To Hannah Bennett. Bennett coming in off the bench, making some noise of her own. Good impact. In and out. Gets one more. Lions have their bigger team in. Darrow to bring the ball up. It's Price, Metter, Rich, and Diggles. Three minutes left in the second quarter. Darrow. Good move, just a little hard off the glass. Hannah Fox gets in, but gets blocked by Dottie Diggles. Fast break. 
Metter gets in trouble, gets it to Price. Price up top key to Lexi Rich, who hits the 18-footer for three. That was great defense, great transition, way to kick it out, and then the assist from Price. Yeah, great ball movement all the way around the horn. Still, Lady Lions playing aggressive defense. And that is a big shot, Carrie. Comes from Miss Chambry Kelso. Rich says, wait a minute, I can do that. Wait, no, not this time. Acosta. Elects to pull it out, set up the offense. Looks like she's asking for the ISO play. Gets it up. Actually had that a chance a, to that go was, in. Or was, that was not Acosta. Oh, yeah, that was Acosta. My. There we go. There we go. OPSU up by one. Minute 41 left. There you see Texas Wesleyan up on Wayland Baptist tonight. Playing in Fort Worth. Oh, good block by Jenna Price. That's a good put up there. Another great inbounds play under the basket by Kelso. Kelso. And they're going to ring Jenna Price up for a charge. She stepped through. This is going to be a little iffy. I don't know. She's not moving through that charge at all. Yeah, I didn't see that as an offensive foul at all. Here we go, and you'll see her take the side step there. She really redirected her body. I don't think that con contact constituted a charge, but it was one. The referee said so. Doesn't matter what we think, right? <laughs> Never. They didn't look up here to see what we thought they should do. Acosta call. with a three! Way out! Carrie, she almost set off an alarm in the parking lot. That was a long range. Metter going to work, overshoots. Atunawa gets it, but is also going to get to go to the line. Atuna has really made an impact coming in here off the bench, both offensively and defensively. She really has. That's Hannah Bennett going to be rung up for her first foul. Atuna, a good free throw shooter. She's three for three from the free throw line tonight. You try to say that. <laughs> That's okay. I'll <laughs> just pass on that. I'll just, you know, like, <laughs> let that go. <laughs> yeah. It was an accident for me. I, if I tried to do it again, I would just butcher it. Beautiful stroke from the free throw line. Atunawa is four for four. Going into the one, two, two press. Now they're in trap. Has the opportunity, Atunawa. Went for the gamble, missed it. And they're gonna ring up Lexi Rich for that foul. That's Hannah Fox that is going to shoot these two free throw shots. Now that time we did get a foul on the press, but sometimes you, uh, people think, oh, I didn't get a steal off of a press. It wasn't effective. But sometimes it's just a matter of it makes them use time off the shot clock. When they get down and finally get set up for their offense, they might have already run off 15 seconds exactly. before they can really get into their offense. And... Unfortunately, that was uh, that was the foul that put OPSU in the bonus, and they got to shoot two automatically. Good inside dig. Pass by DeRoe. Hits a Tunawa. Tunawa having a great game. Long half-court shot by Shambri Kelso. 
no good, but they go in. OPSU goes into the locker room with a three point lead 38 to 35. And I'm sure that Coach Phillips is going to go in the locker room and remind we got to enjoy this game, but it's more enjoyable if you win. That is definitely. Right now, we're going to go down court side with our very own Kristen Urban and assistant coach, Eric Woods. Thanks, Sean. Coach Wood, it was a super close first half. What's it going to take to come out with a win tonight? Uh, keep on pushing in transition. Uh, we're getting a lot of easy looks in transition, a lot of easy looks at three that we got to execute on. We got to hit those. What will you be telling your girls in the locker room? Uh, just stay focused, stay calm, uh, keep pressuring the ball. They got, they got a couple wide open threes here, so keep pressuring the ball, make them put it on the floor, uh, and just keep on looking at those transition uh, breaks. Thanks, Coach Wood, and good luck tonight. Back to you, John. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Coach Eric. Uh, and he's right. Uh, got to do a little bit better on the defensive side of things. Uh, they're creating good pressure, but they got to create the pressure that will stop the easy score. There was a, a, too many. We, we've seen how good this defense really is for the Lady Lions, and we know that they can be a defensive juggernaut down in the paint. And a little too easy uh, of second chance points that happen that really pulled this OPSU team back into uh, contention because they were starting to lose it and Sagu was up by six points at one point. So um, I, I agree with him that uh, they, they, they have to get a little more pressure um, up on the ball. Don't make the entry passes so easy. Yeah, there were a couple of instances, those inbound plays where they let them get some easy baskets yep. or they drew a foul. They've also, they've been so concerned with Munch that sometimes I think they would forget about some of the other players. Uh, Acosta had some good plays there where she uh, hit a couple of long-range shots. Yep. So they, uh, they're they focusing you know, on those main players, but then they're you know, forgetting some of the others, and they've been getting some easy buckets you know, because of that. Well, that's your halftime score, 38-35. OPSU up on top right now. Just a little under 13 minutes left in the halftime. We're going to cut to a few short commercials for this break, but we'll be back in a few minutes with some stats and some more talking points for the third quarter. You're watching the Sagu Sports Network. And we're back just under a minute left in the halftime. Both teams getting ready in their, their final huddle. And there you see the first and second quarter game stats. OPSU shooting well from the three-point line tonight, 42%. And they're controlling the boards, out-rebounding the Lady Lions, which is a rarity. Seven turnovers, though. They've got to, yeah. if they want a chance, you know, to really, at yeah. the end, cut down on turnovers. Yeah, I think that's what's keeping Sagu so close right now because they're not shooting well. You know, we're only shooting about 35% or so. But uh, getting the turnovers and the steals, you know, from OPSU, I yeah. think, is uh, making a difference, giving us a few more possessions. Here come the Lady Lions. Looks like the third quarter is going to start with Glenn, Metter, Diggles, Rich, and Price. Munch inbounds to Acosta. Got a stoppage real quick. Not sure what that was about, but they'll redo this one. Hannah Falk, Taylor Acosta, Addison Munch. Nadia Hayes. And Monty Rieger to start the third quarter this second half for OPSU. A running floater by Taylor Acosta. She's got 11 points tonight, Carrie. Yeah, you don't think about her, you know, carrying through that much and being that much of a threat. But you look at her average, it's, it's not unheard of. She's been doing it all season. 
Oh, big block by Fox. After Metter had missed her first one, got her own rebound, she went back up. Thought she was going to have an easy one, and Fox said, not in my house. That's in and out for Acosta, showing a lot of confidence. She's hit quite a few threes. Oh, good fake. Oh, and it does go down for Lexi Rich. I think she fooled everybody on the court that time, thinking yeah. she was going to hand it off and then just took it to the basket. Bad pass. Price intercepts. Nice bounce pass from Kiara Glenn to Sydney Metter. Metter makes it look easy. They bring it to a, a one-point deficit and immediately. Now that's Coach, good teamwork when you get that two-on-one and oh you yeah. get a layup like that. And it was beautifully executed. Coach Esperanza says we need a timeout. It's not exactly how they wanted this second half to start, I don't think. Coach Esperanza knows that this is an ultimately a very, very important game. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to coach like it's the last game of the year, I guarantee it. Because they can't afford to drop one. It will not be easy. It's, it's not impossible if they lose tonight. But it will not. It just makes the road to the conference tournament that much harder if they do drop it tonight. Yeah. And they know they can win because they, uh, they won the earlier, uh, earlier in the season, they won the matchup in Goodwill, Oklahoma. Yeah, you know, this is feeling like a playoff game for them. You know, they know probably if they lose, there's a good chance it's going to make their road much tougher anyway. Mac U hanging in there at half with a three-point lead over Southwestern Christian University. And from our standpoint, we would like Matthew <laughs> to lose. Uh, yeah, they, they need to give us one. Yeah. Kira Glenn playing good lockdown defense, but she got faked out there. Munch got her in the air, went around, didn't take the shot, and tried to make a difficult pass. Yeah, it was good help from Dottie. Diggles and then Kiera was able to get back and help on defense. And that was saved by Fox. Long shot off the front of the rim by Rieger. I think they were down to like two seconds on the shot yeah, clock. Yeah, had to I shoot mean, it. Yeah. Glenn. Oh, the stopper, Nadia Hayes. Hayes goes for the, the, the steal, misses it, but makes her way back on defense. Go up, go and up. That's going to, yep. Yeah, didn't get it up in time. That's going to be a shot clock violation. Good defense by OPSU. OPSU breaking the press. Hayes didn't handle the pass well, but got it. Made the layup look easy. Worked down to Price and Fox. Blocks another shot. Rieger squares up and hits the three. Extends the lead to six. Sydney Metter takes it to the basket and collects the foul. And that's going to go against Munch. Just her first foul of the game.
short air ball by Lexi Rich from the side, from the baseline. And that goes out of bounds on the Lions. OPSU brings up the ball. And OPSU has really turned up their defense these last few possessions. Oh, I, I am impressed with Hannah Fox and how good she's playing on Price. They're doing a good job of flashing out and showing on those screens and sagging down with some help defense, but yet Sagu has not been able to capitalize on those. A little bit of a floater, doesn't go in, bounces off long. Here comes Kara Glenn, down, sees Metter. Metter just goes in, misses the layup. Tries to get her own rebound, Atunua gets it and ties it up. That's gonna be a jump ball. Again, Atunawa coming in and making her presence felt, just like is picking up where she left off in the first half. She is a high-impact player. Inbounds to Diggles, to Glenn. Glenn sees matter wide open. Fox again with another block! And gets the and foul on the second oh, attempt. Almost got another one back-to-back. -back. Let's see it. It looked like she got a lot of ball on Atunawa. Nope, gets across the forearm for sure. Good call. I think if I've kept this upright, Hannah Fox has five blocks wow. in this game. She has really turned it up. Converts the second one for a Tunawa. Cuts it to five points. Oh, good move by Fox. She's beginning to take the game over. That's going to count. That foul is going to be assessed to Lexi Rich. And that's her second foul. Hannah Fox converts that free throw for her fourth point. So let's see if this timeout can be as effective for Sagu as the OPSU timeout was exactly just a few minutes ago because they came out after their timeout and really played well defensively and on the offensive end as well. What do you tell your ladies in this uh, in this huddle, Kerry? Um, how to you got to stop the bleeding somehow. It's yeah, it's a uh, eight-point deficit now Maybe the highest of the game. Yeah, I think it, it is and I think they've just got coach Phillips has to I think she's letting them talk amongst themselves first and like sort some out uh, Among themselves and then it's like, okay, what are we going to do? You know inside? How are we letting them kind of dominate us inside? Defensively uh, the the lady lions, you know should be able to handle things inside absolutely And there you see around the Sooner Athletic Conference some score updates. Mac U, starting the third quarter, extended their lead by five. Wayland's up on Wesleyan. John Brown's blowing out Langston. And OKC, the unstoppable force of Oklahoma City University women's basketball. Kerry, I think they may be the best women's basketball team in the nation right now. They are sure playing like it and looking like it um, when you just see them play. They're just incredible. Here comes the Tunawa creating some basket, but another block by Hannah Fox. Good look inside. Good look. Dottie Diggles. Slides down, fundamentally sound, keeping herself open to the passing lane, receives the ball, and then makes an easy move into the basket. Nice touch there, yeah. Nadia Hayes.
Tunawa trying to make something happen that goes off the back of the iron. Easy rebound by OPSU. He gets it out to Acosta. There's Munch wide open. In and out. No good. Dodged a little bit of a bullet there. They swung it around and gave Munch a wide open shot. No good for Lexi Rich. Atunawa gets the offensive rebound. Metter trying to make it work. Doesn't. Atunawa with another offensive rebound. Gets it out to Rich for three. Three makes them there pay. Maybe that's what she needs to get, get on track. She's been just a little bit off tonight. A little yeah. flat. Mm -hmm. Oh, easy bucket. But that's going to be Dottie Diggles. Getting the foul. She was late to her assignment. Yeah. She, she was late rotating over. And I think the foul kind of saved the easy bucket. It did. Nadia Hayes converts the first. Now Kenzie Martin in for Dottie Diggles. It's a lot of shooting firepower out on the floor for the Lady Lions right now. Hayes makes her second. She's got 10 tonight. Kiara Glenn going down low. Easy little flota. Easy for her. I don't know if that would have been easy for e either one of us. Oh! She did make it look easy. Hayes, doing big work down low. Seeing a little bit of the vulnerability down on that block. That's two straight possessions for her. And getting the fouls called her way. Yes, it's interesting how they have gone away from much right now and, and deciding to go down low and draw the defense down there. And then if the defense collapses in on her, then that's what's going to open it back up out here for those open shots for much. That foul was called on Kenzie Martin. That's her first of the game. And another block. another block. Are you kidding me? And that's a big shot by Sydney Metter. Set up by the steal. And then the, the kick out. Oh, bad pass. Kara Glenn keeps her handles. Oh, almost goes in. She gets the foul called. And that's going to go against Acosta. It's going to be a two-shot foul. I'm sorry, that's not against Acosta. That is against Kaylee Morgan. And that's how you do it. You shoot well from the free throw line. Keep yourself in the game. And that is what has kept the, the Lions yes. in. They're shooting about 90% from the line so far. Glenn converts both of those, brings it to a one-point ball game. That was quick. That, that five in a row, that, three, that steal and the three-point shot, and then come down in the two free throws, made this a very different game. Oh, good move by Fox, but she misses the layup. Oh, nice move by Sydney Manor, and she misses the layup. Box is going to get traveled. Travel. There we go. That was great defense that set up that travel. She felt like she could never get the shot up cleanly. Well, 
she she got it on the right side had the ball up and then brought it all the way back down to her knees and the defense just got down in there kept her from getting the ball up forced her to travel here she goes up and then gets the ball too low it's fortunate that she did travel because uh, Kenzie Martin was hanging all over her arm. Believe it or not, the Lions can take the lead now with this possession. Oh, good move, Kiara Glenn. So smooth. Oh, that was a nice shot. Good dish out there by Rodriguez and hits Hannah Bennett. So now you can tell this is becoming a strategic game that they're playing now. The coach is calling their timeout yeah. and it, each time it's made a difference. If you're into coaching, this is a lot of fun for you. Both of these coaches are doing a great job moving the chess pieces around and uh, you're seeing some some good execution by the players as well. Really kind of a fun play if you're, if you're a lover of the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a fun game to watch. Yeah, you see the, the changes that the coaches will make when they call their timeouts and change their attack just a little bit. Well, you said it. Uh, the last timeout was called by Coach Phillips and, uh, you know, seeing if they could get the momentum to change, mm -hmm. much like... Uh, Coach Esperanza, when he called his timeout, they worked. Those timeouts were very crucial for both of those uh, sets. And there you see kind of an ugly one up there in, in Kansas, Central Christian blowing out Bacone. And John Brown in Arkansas, Arkansas, blowing out Langston. But there's a tight one, a barn burner here in South Dallas. Nice feed and even better conversion by Lexi Rich. Moving without the ball and cutting to the basket. Great pass and entry. Good, good entry pass by Sydney Metter. Oh, Munch sees the lane. Saw that Kenzie Martin had turned her back. This is a good recognition. This is when you know you got a good, experienced player. Sees that Kenzie Martin was not squared up with her and could beat her down the lane. And then ultimately got the foul to draw. The foul on Lexi there, trying to stay up with Munch. That's three fouls on Lexi Rich. Munch, high arcing shot, goes in. That is her 15th point. And I believe that's her first point of this quarter, this half. Yep. Rebound Lexi Rich. Matter, Rich. Acts like she's going to take the shot. She's in triple threat position. Dribbles out. Gets a good, easy roll to the basket. With the left hand, the fundamentals carry. A little bit too much contact for Sydney Metter there. Yeah, I think she was torn between going for the steal and then realizing she wasn't going to get there and then tried to pull up just a little bit too late. And OPSU is in the double bonus for the rest of this quarter, which is only 26 seconds left. 27. And that's Kelso with both of those free throws to tie it up. Kelso has seven points in this game. Glenn, content to just run the clock out. I have almost no difference between shot clock and game clock. 
in this quarter. They're going to say that bounced off of Nadia Hayes. Sagu keeps the ball. Back out to the top for Glenn. Glenn looking for Martin. They're setting this up for Martin. Martin, big shot, a little long. Munch gets it. Not in time. Clock runs out. No shot for OPSU. And it is tie ball game at the end of the third quarter. Kind of like we predicted. I don't want to say I told you so, <laughs> but we told you so. This is going to be a good game. Yeah, it, it has held true to form what we expected. Didn't see either team. It looked like there for a while OPSU was going to put a little bit of space between uh, them and the Lady Lions, but the, the Lions came back and, and tied it up, actually took the lead, and now it's going to be just 10 more minutes to see how things are going to turn out. We're going to let you see a little bit of the Sooner Athletic Conference action there while we assimilate some statistical analysis. Sagu shooting well from the free throw line. Not a bad free throw night for OPSU. Even though they're shooting a lower percentage, they have the same points, number of points from the free throw line. Sagu did a much better job in the third quarter on the boards. They out-rebounded OPSU by quite a bit. Yeah, because they were behind. I think they were down one yep. at halftime, and now they're up five in the rebounding category. So but they, they definitely did a better job on the boards. OPSU gets the first possession of the fourth quarter. Action has started. Munch gets it blocked. Couldn't tell who, because there was at least three sets of hands in there. Short by Kenzie Martin. Little run and gun. That's going to go off Dottie Diggles. You don't see OPSU running the run and gun too much, but uh, they've been pretty successful tonight when they have. Nadia Hayes gets it. Kelso. Gets it out to Munch. Munch is going to make a decision. She goes down. And that's good defense by Sydney Matter. Now Munch made the mistake of bringing the ball down low that time. Put it right in front of Sydney. Price is back in now. In for Mackenzie Martin. It's a quick shot there by Bennett. And there it goes. The old go to play. Oh, Lexi Rich misses. Kelso calls for Morgan to come out top, set up the offense. Over to Munch, to Bennett, to Morgan, to Kelso, to Morgan. Gets the entry pass down to Nottie Hayes. Nottie Hayes going to work on Dottie Diggles. Diggles with a block off the backboard. Shot Got clock, a quick shot. shot. It's no good. Didn't get it off. That was good. great defense by Dottie that time. It looked like Nadia Hayes was going to have the leverage point there. And Dottie Diggles just made up the difference and almost pinned it on the glass. Still tied up. 58-58. Sagu ball. Left-handed for Jessica Price. Jenna, Jenna Price. <laughs> Wrong sister. <laughs> and she almost poked that one away and got the steal. And a 
Costa's back in, running the point. Kelso sees an opportunity and seizes the opportunity. That three was very good. Glenn just long off the easy 10-footer. Munch picks up her dribble, was in trouble. They didn't make her pay for it. Fox going across and gets a lucky roll off the back of the iron over Jenna Price. And that's five straight points for OPSU. It's been, it's been like, it's been, you know, uh, left jab, left jab, right hook mm -hmm. for both teams. They seem to get a little bit of momentum going and get their opponent on the ropes. And then each team lets up, lets the other one back in it. And it's just been like five, six points here. And then a drought, five, six points for the other team. So back now it's and time forth. for the Lady Lions yeah. to counter punch, to use a boxing analogy. Yeah, right. And, and we see that in these timeouts. Mm -hmm. Mac U up by 10 in the fourth quarter. That's the game of the night for the Lions to watch. Needing Mac U to give up one to make the road in the first round of the tournament come through Waxahachie. They are tied with your Lady Lions in the standings. So it's knotted up at the fourth place. So we'll see what Coach Phillips does, what adjustments she makes now here on offense. They, they had some good little possessions there with cutting to the basket, hit, hitting that cutter, and getting some uh, layups going in. Well, they had they good go looks. So Lexi's missed the layup, and uh, Kiara Glenn had a good-looking 10-footer that just went a little bit long. So. The, the offensive calls are good. They're getting good shots. You see how they're setting up. Basically, they've got five out. You know, they've got that travel there. But they're leaving the, the, the middle wide open so that they can cut, either drive or cut to the basket. Definitely not the possession you want out of a timeout. A little bit of a three-quarter trap. Oh, good move by Nadia Hayes, but it's short. Dottie Diggles gets the rebound. That was way off. Costa makes it look like they're going to fast break, but pulls it out. Gets everybody down, and now they set up the offense in half court. Good feed, but better defense by Jenna Price. Here comes Lexi Rich. Rich out to Glenn. Glenn's going to get rule for travel. Don't know. Don't know about that. Yeah, I think she stepped down with her left and then stepped back with her right. Let's see. She grabs. Eight. There she yeah. is. The left foot is the pivot foot. Yep, it comes up before the ball hits. So referee was right. Costa, and that's going to be an illegal screen on Hannah Fox. Another block by Hannah Fox. I mean, I kind of lost count at around six I or seven. Know. So it, they're just doing a great job on that help defense, even you know, because she had had her girl beat, yeah, and she was going for a layup, and they just collapse on her. Another oh. travel call. 
That's three straight travel calls. Looks like the Lady Lions are getting a little fatigued. Good defense, Kara Glenn got her hand on it, goes out of bounds, stays OPSU ball. We'll see how this, this uh, lineup does defensively when you've got uh, Kiara and Tamara both in there for defensive purposes. We'll see if they can put some pressure. Sydney's out there on the three-point line on Acosta. Munch assessing what she needs to do. She backs it out. Hayes makes a good pass to Acosta. Acosta wow. from 25 feet. That was just a killer shot right there. Wow. And you look at the great job that the Lions have done on Munch this second half. Oh, they have done Holding her to one point, but Jenna Price doesn't others. get it to fall. It was a good move. Fox sees Acosta. Acosta, oh. air ball. But that's going to go against Sydney Matter. And it's going to be three free shots. I, I, when she first let it go, I thought it was going in. I thought we were looking at a four point opportunity. Well, with Oh, a, they're going to call gonna it on the shot. say before oh. the shot? That's wow. strange. Oh, I wonder if we can see that again. That was a beautiful pass by Hannah Fox oh. as well. going to be an offensive foul against Acosta. Acosta stays on the ground and just looks the referees. A little bit in disbelief. There. Seriously? <laughs> but you can see she is trying to take over this game right now. She shows herself very capable. OPSU Four points over their average for the year. Nice. Kier Glenn has become so good at that move. Oh, nice. Steal by Kier Glenn. Glenn There's gets it again. One. Same spot almost. Much that was needed. The, great defense. Yeah. Yeah. The by pressure the is working. See, they, now they've got... It's like they called the foul that time. But the pressure is affecting OPSU right now. I think they're feeling it. That press is you know, just giving them, making them be a little bit uncomfortable trying to get the ball up the court. La Lady Lions have cut the lead down to four from eight. Oh, Costa, great mood. She is so fast, quick. Left Sydney Metter, who is probably trying to protect against getting any more fouls. DeRoe in the game now. Speedster. She goes. That was saved by Price. No good by Metter from the corner. And Munch just lead, a lead, far lead pass, knowing that the speedster in Acosta. Talking about Acosta, she's just doing work. Going in, slashing, scoring. It is amazing how she's getting those shots up inside against all the bigs, the bigs of Farsagu. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of bigs down there in the paint, and somehow. Just getting it up and under. Well, of course, Dara was the, Dara was the closest to her on that, but went, held her hands up high, and Acosta goes up under the hands. Dara says, what can I do? I'm just, I'm going to foul her. 
they've got to stop her more out front and keep her from getting down yes. and getting that penetration gotta down use there. the feet better and all of a sudden you look and she has 18 points in the game incredible there you see some update scoring around the Sooner Athletic Conference looks like everyone's handling their business tonight Lexi Rich trying to get it done for three-point land. It was long, no good. Two-man trap. OPSU breaks it. Oh, errant pass off the fingertips of Monty Rieger. So we'll see how Lexi can do coming in on the offensive end. Now she had a little rest there. And see if she's got some fresh legs now. To, oh, backdoor like cut! <laughs> Easy for Lexi Rich. That was a great cut. Oh, the speed of Kiara Glenn. And one. And she's and gonna one. convert it! That's two. And the whistle will give her one more. Great speed to intercept that pass. And she's yeah. pumped up. Yeah, I think she's fired up. She's not willing to, to take this loss, so she's going to do what she can to bring the Lions back. This Lady Lions team is not used to losing. One of the best seasons yeah. on record. Definitely one of the, the better teams that they've had in a while, record-wise. Uh, they're looking for maybe being able to get their 20th win in the season. Uh-oh. And there's a whistle there. Not sure why. Hannah Fox lost her balance and had to throw it back in. And they're going to call that... On Jenna Price. And there's another one. <laughs> if that is on her, that might be her fourth. Yeah, that's her fourth foul. Yep. Officially her fourth foul. Two really quick ones. Kiara Glenn playing lights out defense. They got to get it across. Just they barely, do barely. Just barely got it. And Acosta showing good ball handling skills. No panic. And here comes Morgan. Morgan dribbles out of trouble. Eight seconds left. Fox. No roll. That's a big rebound by Munch. And I think they're going to get Darrow. Let's see. They haven't posted it yet. Or is that a timeout? No foul called. That was a big rebound, a big offensive rebound. Because yeah, by, by Munch. Yeah. Um, and neither team in the bonus yet. But the next foul that the Lions give will put OPSU in the bonus which is two shots in women's basketball automatically. Well, the reason why that rebound was so big is that when you're looking at just um, a minute and a half or so left, you know they're going to come out and run clock. It's Restarts the shot clock, mm -hmm. and now they have an opportunity to run more time. One minute, 23 seconds left. So they can get this under a minute if they use most of the shot clock. So look for the Lions to be really aggressive, trying to get the steal like that. Kiara Glenn She's going steals dish. the... Oh, maybe not. Oh, and gets a hard foul. But she's going to get an opportunity to shoot two. Oh, that was the best thing that could have happened. A steal basically on the inbounds. No time expired hardly. Come down, get fouled. And Shooting score. free throws with no time running right now. 
best way to score, but they do not. You've got to hit these free throws down the stretch. They've done such a great job shooting free throws until now. And this is when it counts. Got to get this one with the clock stopped. It's a three-point ball game. Kiara Glenn hits her second. The full court presses on. 2-2-1 two, two, with a trap on the sides. Want to force to the middle. OPSU breaks it easily. Nadia Hayes, easy layup. That was a great press break by OPSU. Fantastic. Everybody ran their lanes. Lexi Rich calls for it, wants that three-point shot, gets it. Gritty play by the veteran. That was the great drive in step back three. It's just what they needed to exactly. keep it. It's now a one possession, one possession game. Mm -hmm. Just two points at that. They're putting Price back in. She's got four fouls. <laughs> Trying to read the coach's lips. Couldn't quite make out what's going to happen here, but Coach Esperanza is drawing up an inbounds play because he knows the pressure is going to be at an all-time high on this inbounds play. Now, they do get it uh, at half court due to the timeout. Yes, you know, the Lady Lions are going to be pressing all over the court. They're not going to let them just sit out there and run clock. They're going to be putting pressure. Hope to come up with another steal again like they just did. It's a stacked play. Just below the old timeline. They get it to Morgan. Morgan's up top. Trying to penetrate. Looking to run the clock down as far as possible. Not sure what happened there. But we uh, might have got away with a foul, without a foul call there. Yeah, but it was still a, a maybe a poor decision to put that up as a shot. That rolled off. Off of OPSU. That's going to remain Sagu basketball underneath the basket. And a timeout. That's going to be the last timeout for Coach Phillips and her Sagu squad. Just one timeout left for OPSU. 13 seconds to go, down by two. This is these, a, are, these are things that dreams are made of. That's I'm, right. This I'm, is a nail biter. And uh, this is how you used to practice as, as an aspiring basketball player you're out in your, your own yard. And yeah. you're counting down three, two, one, and the shot for the win. Sagu has a chance to tie this up at least. Maybe go ahead if they successfully convert a three-point shot. A loose stack underneath the goal. Lexi Rich, a little too uh, quick. Big uh, rebound. And that's going to be Sagu Ball still. She, she came down on the line, out of bounds. So that was a break. Yeah, it looked like it m might have been... A jump ball was going to be initially called, and then I think once she let loose of the ball, it rolled out of bounds, last touch by OPSU. Here we go. In a semi-box. Running the play to Lexi Rich. Rich is going to 
Oh. They're going to get Rich with the push off down on the baseline. Coach Phillips, they're urging her players to continue to play defense. Don't give up. Yeah, they've done a great job on this full court press. They've gotten several steals and quick buckets off of it. So they definitely still have a chance. It's not over yet. Coach Esperanza calls his final timeout. I don't want to play too much armchair quarterback, but I don't know. I might would have waited to take that timeout. Sagu does ha not have any other timeouts left. They Wait till just you get it in quickly. And maybe throw it long, mm -hmm. or or even let's see what they set up in defense. Mm -hmm. They had them on the ropes there, and uh, now you give Sagu a chance to talk about it. Of course, they will now get it at half court. Might be they, one advantage it, though, instead oh, big, of that's it, trying that's, to come in at the end line. That's baseline. a huge advantage, but you also know that coach has got to talk about. It gives Coach mm -hmm. Phillips a chance to talk about. Foul. Make sure right. you foul immediately. Don't let an easy. There it is. That was almost a almost steal. Almost a steal, yeah. That would have been in a, a race to the other end, yeah, with the. Yep, with, and it could have been done. Four point uh, six seconds left. Definitely doable. Now you really got to just, well, if she makes this, it will be, you got to have a three-point shot. If she makes both, pretty much seals the deal. Lexi trying to get the crowd into it there. Oh, big three, big, big three right there. Acosta looking cool as ice. That's off. Got to get it down no quick. No Got to get it up. Got to get it off. And just a little short. It was a hair short. Your Lady Lions drop a heartbreaker. Three-point loss, 73 to 70, here in the Schaefer Center to OPSU. They lost twice to them now. Hmm by a total of five points. Last time it was uh, two free throws at the end that sealed the deal. And uh, this one, not one at the free throw line, but iced up at the free throw line. And there you see it, updated from all the games that have been played tonight in women's basketball around the Sooner Athletic Conference. This is your most up-to-date look. And that actually puts Sagu in fifth place. There's still, still hope because there's more games to be played, but you have to have more things to uh, happen and go your way, especially with Mid-America winning tonight and Sagu losing tonight. Now there is a full game in between. Um, and Sagu has a really tough game and coming up, coming yep. up yep. Saturday. So uh, they're going to need some things to happen, and they're going to have to really play well coming this Saturday and snag the win uh, to 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 get that uh, victory and get back into fourth place. And the reason we're making the emphasis there is fourth place gets to, to host the first round. And there you see the bracket. And that's what it would look like if it happened tomorrow. This is how the matchups would flesh out. And that would put Sagu and Mackey against one another. Still a little bit more left to play in the conference play. So that's not going to be the final look. But if it were, that is how it would look. Well, we're getting ready for part two of tonight's action. The men are hosting Oklahoma Panhandle State University in the Schaefer Center tonight. We'll be back in just a few minutes. You're watching the Zagu Sports Network. 